Another thing that I have basically completely cut out or try to avoid at all costs is channel if you're new Taylor here today is gonna to be a prep update physique update which you guys just saw and I check it with my coach today so when she gives me the new protocol I'm gonna let you guys know what's going on we'll also see a workout in today's video and I also wanted to talk a little bit about being bloated and feeling bloated so I know that this is a topic that comes up a lot and it's honestly probably one of the most popular or common questions that I get in my DMs like weekly and I always end up just writing the same thing out over and over and I figured it's time for me to just make a little bit of a video talking about feeling bloated or being bloated and some things or tips and tricks that you could probably do or try out that might work for you these are things that work for me and this is a little disclaimer I'm not a doctor you have to do what's best for you and your body but these are things that I have implemented over the last few years that I have found extremely beneficial that I wanted to share with you guys today so I hope you enjoyed this video we're gonna talk a little bit about my physique update get into the bloating piece when I check in with my coach I will update you on what she says and then you'll see a workout video from me I am currently a little under nine weeks out from my show so yeah let's get right into it I weighed myself this morning I was 130 pounds it's been honestly stuck around here for a few weeks now which is crazy because I feel like my measurements have changed, my structure has changed, I'm seeing new lines all the time. My strength hasn't decreased too much over the last few weeks and my energy's been pretty high, but I think it has to do with me, like my meat has been down, my overall activity has been down just because I've been working from home and technically laid off as well. So I haven't been on the go as much because there isn't really anything to do besides be home right now because we're in lockdown. So I think what we'll probably end up doing is increasing cardio a little bit um, and just monitoring my steps more. I am pretty careful with it anyway. But I have 24 hours in the day, I can do more work and we're just gonna keep grinding it out until we are where we need to be. So I am 130 pounds now, but it was down to like 129 all week. I had my refeed yesterday, so that could be why. It could just be, oh, I had a weird sleep, who really knows? But that's where I am. And I wanted to talk about not getting discouraged when the scale doesn't go down. Like it's been fluctuating and it's definitely frustrating and it's hard on your mind because you know you have to be at a certain place or you, see yourself at a certain place and i made an instagram post about this yesterday because i was talking about being here in the now and it's so easy especially on bikini preps to get caught up in where you need to be like you're so focused on that end like where i need to be what i need to look like you're looking at girls competing all the time you guys are competing and you're anything like me I'm always like looking at shows and like suits and people's hair and I'm looking at their bodies and they're like stage lean and then I look at myself and I'm like, oh shit, like I, I still have, you know, I still have nine weeks, I still have like X amount of pounds to go if I'm not ready and then blah, blah, blah and then the stress builds up and I just feel like you can get so easily caught up in like where you want to be and 
instead you should be focused on where you are now what you can do now being here in the now and that's something that i've really been trying to reflect on and just pay attention to over the last few weeks especially being here at home and i think that journaling and and all of that has been really helping me big time coming on here of course and talking to you guys but just looking back at progress photos I'm like, wow, I'm so appreciative of my body and where I am now and my mind space. Like, why stress? Like, my coach knows what she's doing. I have put full faith in her. I know what I'm doing. I know at the end of the day, I'm putting in the work and giving it my all. However it turns out is how it's gonna turn out. There is no point in stressing out. And you shouldn't get discouraged because, you know, you could literally wake up one day and not be stressed out anymore and like things could just move well and you could drop two to three pounds or you know your clothes will start fitting differently like i noticed this week when i was putting on jeans and shorts and things especially my last summer stuff everything was too big or just fitting me differently so it's easy to say okay well the scale is not moving as quickly or as frequently as it was when i first started this cut but the leaner you get the harder it is for you to lose weight if that makes sense or the longer it takes because your body's holding on to that body fat and for me i put on a decent amount of muscle over the last few years so i can't expect myself to be at a certain amount of body weight when i don't know i haven't even been stage lean in like two or three years so it's hard for me to justify what weight i should be but really what matters most is how i'm looking and if i'm putting in the work so just want to touch on that i don't really know what changes are going to be made i'm sure we will be adjusting some things i'm ready for things to get a little bit more difficult honestly i need a bit of a challenge so if she does make things a little bit harder that is okay that's what i'm doing that's what i'm here for we've got eight weeks to grind it out so that's what we're going to do but just wanted to touch on prep super quickly because you guys saw what i was looking like i didn't show my weight but now you know and yeah so moving forward Let's talk a little bit about feeling bloated. I don't know about you, but for me, being bloated or feeling stomach discomfort or pain or like swelling or inflammation in your stomach is probably one of the most uncomfortable things that you can experience. I literally can't stand feeling bloated or being bloated. I hate when things fit tight or just they're uncomfortable. Um, I don't feel confident and I feel like my stomach just swells and it's just obviously not a good time. So I'm sure everyone feels the same about bloating. For me, bloating was always the worst when I would eat out or I would go grab something. So I always thought that when you ate out or I associated eating out or eating bad or unhealthy, with bloating, like I was like, that's what happens. You eat bad, you get bloated. And that's not 100% the truth. So when I started tracking calories and macros, I found that as my calories um, were more consistent, I was eating a lot of the same foods consistently, and I was like, hey, like I'm not really that bloated. And I was avoiding going out, and I was avoiding eating super, super high fat foods like cheese and some dairy. Um, I was also avoiding eating like other things and I was eating really clean. So 80 to 90% whole foods. And this was like my first year of tracking. I was just trying to make the most of it. And when I realized I was the most bloated was after I had whey protein powder, ones that weren't the best quality, especially and dairy and when I ate out. So, and then I realized when I was eating out, I was eating a lot of like nachos or like I'd get a cheeseburger or, or like poutine or something like that. So there was always cheese associated and I ended up pinpointing what foods irritated me the most through tracking calories and macros. So what I decided to do was like, hey, okay, at these certain times I feel bloated. What did I eat a couple hours before? What was my last meal? Has this been consistent? And I started actually logging and keeping track of when I felt bloated and pinpointing what foods could have possibly caused me to feel this way. And I ended up getting tests done and realizing that I actually am like lactose intolerant and other foods that are highly acidic bother me too. And I had to just monitor that for a long time. And that was probably four or five years ago. I can handle some dairy now. I've been incorporating it slowly back in, but even then it still usually bothers me. Um, so that's my main tip. Like tracking your calories can seem overwhelming and consuming, but it really helps you pinpoint what foods make you feel a certain way. Energy wise, you know, bloating wise, whatever that might be. And for me, it really helps with the bloating piece. So the next thing is definitely your water consumption. Making sure that you're consuming enough water is so, so important. I have anywhere from like 
three liters to four liters a day. It depends on your body weight. If you have a coach, they'll usually help you out with that. I just make sure that I'm getting enough water in. And I also do lemon water too throughout the day and in the morning. I take greens, I take reds, and I also supplement other vitamins that I think really help with my personal experience with bloating and inflammation. So I take Flex XT and a joint support supplement and omegas. And also a multivitamin and vitamin D every single day. Those are non-negotiables and my greens and my reds because that all helps me with natural energy, digestion, hydrating myself, and making sure that I have a foundation built where I'm not deficient in anything when it comes to vitamins, minerals, nutrients, whatever it is that my body might need to function properly. And as long as I fuel myself properly and I'm getting enough water in, I find I usually don't have that many issues with bloating. Um, especially over the last year. But my greens and reds have definitely been key for that as well. The next thing that I wanted to talk a little bit about is fiber intake. So your fiber intake can cause you to have digestion issues if you don't have enough or if you're having way too much. So this is something that you should definitely monitor. Again, with tracking calories and macros, any app will probably tell you what your fiber intake is. But being aware of that is something that I think is super important because if you're going overboard with it and then you're consuming things like greens multiple times a day, you might feel bloating, discomfort, or digestion issues. Same thing if you're not getting enough. So you gotta try to find that sweet spot. For me, it's around 25 to 35 grams. I I think usually 30 is kind of like where I like to hit, but that will depend and vary based on the person. So just try to find that sweet spot for you and talk to your coach about it because they can help you kind of get in the swing of things if that makes sense. But I wanted to touch on that because it definitely plays a factor in digestion and can also cause bloating if you're having too much fiber too. Another thing that I have basically completely cut out or I try to avoid at all costs is sugar alcohols. So when I first started prep in 2018, I was the type that I would try to fit in whatever I could. My macros were so low at certain points where I was like, I wanna have a treat or I wanna have something so I don't feel restricted and fitting things in is definitely key. And I love that the if it fits your macros approach can be so balanced and so rewarding and you just don't feel restricted. But there are time and place for everything and filling your body up with preservatives and sugar alcohols and things just so you can fit things in that taste better can cause your body a lot of discomfort. And I used to always have protein bars that were really high in sugar alcohols and I didn't realize um, and these fillers and things and they used to kill my stomach. Most protein bars have whey in it, so that played a factor too, but I always found protein bars that were super high in sugar alcohols, extremely hard for my body to break down, and I always felt pain, discomfort, to the point where like, I literally, like my chest would like blow out, and I would just be in pain and knots. Like it was so bad. So sugar alcohol is something that I always monitor now. Depends on how much is in what it is that you're eating and what else you've eaten that day, for me anyways. But I just have this prep like really tried to eat whole foods. I'm gonna have a protein bar. I'll have a Jack Factory Authentic bar because it's using whole ingredients. And there's nothing in the Jack Factory bars that will cause you discomfort. Um, again, I'm someone who's very sensitive, so if I can eat them, you probably will be okay. Sugar alcohols is something that I definitely keep an eye on now, and although it sucks because a lot of great low calorie foods are filled with them, um, sometimes you just gotta do what's best for your body, and I personally would rather feel good and not feel discomfort and maybe not have a treat to trick my mind into thinking that I'm having something that I shouldn't be or whatever. I, my, how my body feels and how I look um, and my energy and my comfort is just so much more important now than it used to be and that's what I like to focus on. So cutting those things out is just key to me and feeling better and just giving your body what it needs to, I guess, act the way that you want it to. So the next thing is preservatives. Um, I don't eat a whole lot of preservatives, like processed foods, all of that. I don't eat a whole lot of processed foods. I think I had processed meat for the first time like a few days ago in like six months or seven months. I'm not against eating it. You can buy deli meat, processed meat, natural meat, um, and it's super high protein and usually low calorie, like low for carb, and usually low carb, low fat, but just be aware of the ingredients that are in these things. Um, the more preservatives and the more processed anything is, 
it's probably gonna cause you a little bit more discomfort than whole foods would. So if, again, once you're tracking your calories and macros, you notice that after you eat certain foods, there's discomfort or certain foods are super high in sodium and then you notice you're like retaining water after. Make sure you're monitoring that stuff too. Um, I think that the sodium piece and the water piece, if you're having a lot of really salty stuff and you're not drinking enough water, when you do drink water, your body's probably gonna retain it or hold on to it. That's something that you need to um, make sure that you're just monitoring. That's something that you definitely need to consider as well. So obviously there's tons of different things, but I really think just like being in tune with yourself and paying attention to when you feel this way and looking at the ingredients of what it is that you're eating is probably the key as well as supplementing and making sure that you have that foundation for all the supplements and vitamins and things that your body needs to perform optimally. It's just like the best way to approach it in my opinion. Those are just things that I have kind of cut out or been mindful of over the last few years and especially in the last six months to a year. I've been very careful and I've noticed a major change in my waistline, my bloating, my water retention, digestion in general and all of that. So keep an eye on all of that. Um, if you do have any questions at all, you can comment down below or send me a message. I know this is very generic, but I just wanted to mention if you are looking to order any supplements from Jack Factory, you can use my code TBT. It saves you 20% off and it's extremely helpful when you're getting all these vitamins and things that you stock up on and that you take every single day. So everyone loves to save some money. Check that out. The link will be down below. But otherwise, I'm going to go make something to eat. Then we'll probably train, talk to Dayraja, and I'll keep you guys posted on what's going on with prep when she gives you my update back. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I will check back with you guys when we get ready to go to the gym. that workout if you try it out be sure to let me know I just wanted to tell you a little bit about what's going on with prep so I checked in with De Raja um, and we're basically gonna dig a little bit deeper for the next few days so we're cutting carbs back a little bit um, we're also just increasing cardio I mentioned a couple of times my meat has been down just my overall activity throughout the day because I'm not working and I'm just kind of working from home sitting down and like just doing editing and all that kind of stuff so we're increasing cardio steady state so I'm doing 45 minutes in the morning and 45 minutes in the evening five times this week with two rest days i'm going to train five times this week and we're going to do a cut back in carbs so it's in, i think i'm doing 100 carb 40 fat 140 protein then two back-to-back -back refeeds of 130 carb and i think it's 135 protein and 40 fat so just like a slight increase in carb for two days in a row at the end of the week which will be kind of nice so it kind of gives you something to look forward to at the end of the week if that makes sense the video you guys saw was yesterday
yesterday i woke up today feeling even leaner and better and i had a really good workout last night and yeah so things are going pretty good i keep looking at my comparison photos and where i am now compared to other shows and other preps and everything looks good so i will keep you posted i'll probably do another check-in in a couple of days so stay tuned for that as well as i have a tlf try on haul on the way and another sheen try on haul underway so as soon as those videos are edited they will be posted up for you don't forget to like and subscribe if you guys are enjoying this content for me otherwise we will see you in the next one